American English, Wikipedia article audio. American English, sometimes called United States English or U.S. English, is the set of varieties of the English language native to the United States of America. English is the most widely spoken language in the United States and is the common language used by the federal government, it is considered the de facto language of the country because of its widespread use but it is not established as the official language of the country, despite being given official status by 32 of the 50 state governments. As an example, while both Spanish and English have equivalent status in the local courts of Puerto Rico, under federal law, English is the official language for any matters being referred to the United States District Court for the Territory. Varieties Eastern New England The use of English in the United States is a result of English and British colonization of the Americas. The first wave of English-speaking settlers arrived in North America during the 17th century, followed by further migrations in the 18th and 19th centuries. Since then, American English has developed into new dialects, in some cases under the influence of West African and Native American languages, German, Dutch, Irish, Spanish and other languages of successive waves of immigrants to the United States. Any North American English accent perceived as free of noticeably local, ethnic, or cultural markers is popularly called General American, described by sociolinguist William Leibov as a fairly uniform broadcast standard in the mass media. Otherwise, according to Leibov, with the major exception of Southern American English, regional accents throughout the country are not yielding to this broadcast standard, and historical and present linguistic evidence does not support the notion of there being a single mainstream American accent. On the contrary, the sound of American English continues to evolve, with some local accents disappearing, but several larger regional accents emerging. While written American English is standardized across the country, there are several recognizable variations in the spoken language, both in pronunciation and in vernacular vocabulary. The regional sounds of present-day American English are reportedly engaged in a complex phenomenon of both convergence and divergence, some accents are homogenizing and leveling while others are diversifying and deviating further away from one another. In 2010, William Leibov summarized the current state of regional American accents as follows. Some regional American English has undergone vigorous new sound changes since the mid-19th century onwards, spawning relatively recent Mid-Atlantic, Western Pennsylvania, Inland Northern, Midland and Western accents, all of which are now more different from each other than they were 50 or 100 years ago. Meanwhile, the unique features of the Eastern New England and New York City accents appear to be stable. On the other hand, dialects of many smaller cities have receded in favor of the new regional patterns, for example, the traditional accents of Charleston and of Cincinnati have given way to the general Midland accent, and of St. Louis now approaches the sounds of an inland northern or Midland accent. At the same time, the southern accent, despite its huge geographic coverage, is on the whole slowly receding due to cultural stigma. Younger speakers everywhere in the South are shifting away from the marked features of Southern speech. Finally, the Hoytoiter dialect shows the paradox of receding among younger speakers in North Carolina's Outer Banks Islands, yet strengthening in the islands of the Chesapeake Bay. The Western dialect, including Californian and New Mexican subtypes, is defined by New York City The North Central dialect, including an Upper Michigan subtype, 
is defined by the inland northern dialect, including its less advanced western New England subtypes, is defined by south. The Midland dialect is defined by the Western Pennsylvania dialect, including its advanced Pittsburgh subtype, is defined by the Southern dialects, including several subtypes, are defined by inland north and north central. The Mid-Atlantic dialect, including Philadelphia and Baltimore subtypes, is defined by Midland. The New York City dialect is defined by West. Eastern New England dialect, including Maine and Boston subtypes, is defined by Below, 11 major American English accents are defined by their particular combinations of certain characteristics. Other varieties Marked New England speech is mostly associated with Eastern New England, centering on Boston and Providence, and traditionally includes some notable degree of R dropping, as well as the back tongue positioning of the slash U slash vowel and the slash A slash vowel. In and north of Boston, the slash R slash sound is famously centralized or even fronted. Boston shows a cot cot merger while Providence keeps the same two vowels sharply distinct. New York City English, which prevails in a relatively small but nationally recognizable dialect region in and around New York City. Its features include some notable degree of non rota city and a locally unique short of vowel pronunciation split. New York City English otherwise broadly follows northern patterns, except that the slash a slash vowel is fronted. The cot cot merger is markedly resisted around New York City, as depicted in popular stereotypes like tog and kwfi, with this thought vowel being typically tensed and diphthongal. Most older southern speech along the eastern seaboard was non-rhotic, though, today, all local southern dialects are strongly rhotic defined most recognizably by the slash a slash vowel losing its gliding quality and approaching, the initiating event for the southern vowel shift, which includes the famous southern drawl that makes short front vowels into gliding vowels. Since the mid-twentieth century, a distinctive new northern speech pattern has developed near the Canadian border of the United States centered on the central and eastern Great Lakes region. Linguists call this region the Inland North, as defined by its local northern city's vowel shift occurring in the same region whose standard Midwestern speech was the basis for general American in the mid-20th century. The Inland North accent was famously sketched on the television show Saturday Night Live's Bill Swirsky's Superfans segments. Many people view the North Central or Upper Midwestern accent from the stereotypical lens of the movie Fargo. The North Central accent is characterized by influences from the German and Scandinavian settlers of the region. In parts of Pennsylvania and Ohio, another dialect known as Pennsylvania Dutch English was also once spoken among the Pennsylvania Dutch community. Between the traditional American dialect areas of the North and South is what linguists have long called the Midland. This geographically overlaps with some states situated in the lower Midwest. West of the Appalachian Mountains begins the broad zone of modern-day Midland speech. Its vocabulary has been divided into two discrete subdivisions, the North Midland that begins north of the Ohio River Valley area and the South Midland speech, which to the American ear has a slight trace of the Southern accent. The South Midland dialect follows the Ohio River in a generally southwesterly direction, moves across Arkansas and Oklahoma west of the Mississippi, and peters out in West Texas. 
Modern Midland speech is transitional regarding a presence or absence of the Cot Cot merger. Historically, Pennsylvania was a home of the Midland dialect, however, this state of early English speaking settlers has now largely split off into new dialect regions, with distinct Philadelphia and Pittsburgh dialects documented since the latter half of the 20th century. Phonology a generalized Midland speech continues westward until becoming a somewhat internally diverse Western American English that unites the entire western half of the country. This western dialect is mostly unified by a firm cot cot merger and a conservatively backed pronunciation of the long o sound in goat, toe, show, etc., but a fronted pronunciation of the long o o sound in goose, lose tune, etc. Western speech itself contains such advanced subtypes as Pacific Northwest English and California English, with the native speaker English of Mexican Americans also being a subtype primarily of the Western dialect. The island state of Hawaii, though primarily English-speaking, is also home to a Creole language known commonly as Hawaiian Pidgin and some Hawaii residents speak English with a pidgin-influenced accent. Vocabulary Although no longer region-specific, African-American English, which remains prevalent particularly among working and middle-class African-Americans, has a close relationship to Southern dialects and has greatly influenced everyday speech of many Americans, including hip-hop culture. The same aforementioned socio-economic groups, but among Hispanic and Latino Americans, have also developed native speaker varieties of English. The best studied Latino Englishes are Chicano English, spoken in the West and Midwest, and New York Latino English, spoken in the New York metropolitan area. Additionally, Ethnic varieties such as Yeshiva English and Yinglish are spoken by some American Jews, and Cajun Vernacular English by some Cajuns in southern Louisiana. Cot Cot Merger to Slash O Slash Is Slash U Slash Is Compared with English as spoken in England, North American English is more homogeneous and any North American accent that exhibits a majority of the most common phonological features is known as General American. This section mostly refers to such widespread or mainstream pronunciation features that characterize American English. Studies on historical usage of English in both the United States and the United Kingdom suggest that spoken American English did not simply deviate away from period British English, but retained certain now archaic features contemporary British English has since lost. One of these is the rhoticity common in most American accents, because in the 17th century, when English was brought to the Americas, most English in England was also rhotic. The preservation of rhoticity has been further supported by the influences of Hiberno-English, West Country English and Scottish English. In most varieties of North American English, the sound corresponding to the letter R is a post-alveolar approximant or ret-reflex approximant rather than a trill or tap. A unique bunched tongue variant of the approximant R sound is also associated with the United States, and seems particularly noticeable in the Midwest and South. Cot cot merger to slash o slash is slash u slash is. Traditionally, the East Coast comprises three or four major linguistically distinct regions each of which possesses English varieties both distinct from each other as well as quite internally diverse, New England, the New York metropolitan area, the Mid-Atlantic states, and the southern United States. The only R-dropping regional accents of American English are all spoken along the East Coast, except the Mid-Atlantic region, 
because these areas were in close historical contact with England and imitated prestigious varieties of English at a time when these were undergoing changes, in particular, the London prestige of Nonroda City from the 17th century onwards, which is now widespread throughout most of England. Today, Nonroda City is confined in the United States to the accents of eastern New England, the former plantations South, New York City, and African American English. Other than these varieties, American accents are rhotic, pronouncing every instance of the R sound. Differences between British and American English Notes Many British accents have evolved in other ways compared to which general American English has remained relatively more conservative, for example, regarding the typical southern British features of a trap bath split, fronting of slash o slash, and h dropping, none of which typical American accents show. The innovation of slash t slash glottaling which does occur before a consonant and word finally in general American, additionally occurs variably between vowels in British English. On the other hand, general American is more innovative than the dialects of England, or English elsewhere in the world, in a number of its own ways. No cot cot merger, the cot vowel is and cot vowel is slash ae slash is universally, the triggering event for the northern city's vowel shift in more advanced subtypes slash ae slash 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 o slash is. Some mergers found in most varieties of both American and British English include The process of coining new lexical items started as soon as English-speaking British American colonists began borrowing names for unfamiliar flora, fauna, and topography from the Native American languages. Examples of such names are opossum, raccoon, squash, moose, wigwam, and moccasin. The languages of the other colonizing nations also added to the American vocabulary. For instance, cookie, from Dutch, kindergarten from German, levy from French, and rodeo from Spanish. Landscape features are often loan words from French or Spanish, and the word corn, used in England to refer to wheat, came to denote the maize plant, the most important crop in the U.S. Most Mexican Spanish contributions came after the War of 1812, with the opening of the West, like ranch. New forms of dwelling created new terms and types of homes like log cabin, adobe in the 18th century, apartment, shanty in the 19th century, project, condominium, townhouse, mobile home in the 20th century and parts thereof. Industry and material innovations from the 19th century onwards provide distinctive new words, phrases and idioms through railroading and transportation terminology, ranging from types of roads to infrastructure, to automotive terminology often now standard in English internationally. Already existing English words such as store, shop, lumber underwent shifts in meaning, others remained in the U.S. while changing in Britain. From the world of business and finance came new terms, from sports and gambling terminology came, specific jargon aside, common everyday American idioms, including many idioms related to baseball. The names of some American inventions remained largely confined to North America as did certain automotive terms. Cot cot merger is in transition slash a slash may be, often only before slash l slash, slash m slash, slash n slash, or slash 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 a slash is slash o slash is. New foreign loanwords came with 19th and early 20th century European immigration to the U.S., notably, from Yiddish and German. 
A large number of English colloquialisms from various periods are American in origin, some have lost their American flavor, while others have not, many are now distinctly old-fashioned. Some English words now in general use, such as hijacking, disc jockey, boost, bulldoze and jazz, originated as American slang. American English has always shown a marked tendency to use nouns as verbs. Examples of nouns that are now also verbs are interview, advocate, vacuum, lobby, pressure, rear end, transition, feature, profile, spearhead, skyrocket, showcase, bad mouth, vacation, major, and many others. Compounds coined in the U.S. are for instance foothill, landslide, backdrop, teenager, brainstorm, bandwagon, hitchhike, small time, and a huge number of others. Some are euphemistic. Many compound nouns have the verb and preposition combination, stopover, line up, try out, spin off, shoot out. Hold up, hide out, come back, make over, and many more. Some prepositional and phrasal verbs are in fact of American origin. Noun endings such as e, airy, stir, and kian are also particularly productive in the U.S. Several verbs ending in eyes are of U.S. origin, for example, fetishize, prioritize, burglarize accessorize, weatherize, etc., and so are some back formations. Among syntactical constructions that arose are outside of, headed for, meet up with, back of, etc. Americanisms formed by alteration of some existing words include notably pesky, phony, rambunctious, buddy, Sunday, skeeter. Sachet and kitty corner. Adjectives that arose in the U.S. are, for example, lengthy, bossy, cute and cutesy, punk, sticky, through, and many colloquial forms such as peppy or wacky. Bibliography A number of words and meanings that originated in Middle English or Early Modern English and that have been in everyday use in the United States have since disappeared in most varieties of British English, some of these have cognates in Lowland Scots. Terms such as fall, faucet, diaper, candy, skillet, eyeglasses, and obligate are often regarded as Americanisms. Fall for example came to denote the season in 16th century England, a contraction of Middle English expressions like fall of the leaf and fall of the year. Gotten is often considered to be largely an Americanism. Other words and meanings were brought back to Britain from the US, especially in the second half of the 20th century, these include hire, I guess, baggage, hit and the adverbs overly and presently. Some of these, for example, monkey wrench and waste basket, originated in 19th century Britain. The adjectives mad meaning angry, smart meaning intelligent, and sick meaning ill are also more frequent in American English than British English. Linguist Bert Vox created a survey, completed in 2003, polling English speakers across the United States about their specific everyday word choices, hoping to identify regionalisms. The study found that most Americans prefer the term sub for a long sandwich, soda for a sweet and bubbly soft drink, you or you guys for the plural of you, sneakers for athletic shoes, and shopping cart for a cart used for carrying supermarket goods. American English and British English often differ at the levels of phonology, phonetics, vocabulary, and, to a much lesser extent, grammar and orthography. The first large American dictionary, 
an American dictionary of the English language, known as Webster's Dictionary, was written by Noah Webster in 1828, codifying several of these spellings. Differences in grammar are relatively minor, and do not normally affect mutual intelligibility, these include, different use of some auxiliary verbs, formal agreement with collective nouns, different preferences for the past forms of a few verbs although the purportedly British forms can occasionally be seen in American English writing as well, different prepositions and adverbs in certain contexts, and whether or not a definite article is used, in very few cases. Often, these differences are a matter of relative preferences rather than absolute rules, and most are not stable, since the two varieties are constantly influencing each other, and American English is not a standardized set of dialects. Differences in orthography are also minor. The main differences are that American English usually uses spellings such as flavor for British flavor, fiber for fiber, defense for defense, analyze for analyze, license for license, catalog for catalog and traveling for traveling. Noah Webster popularized such spellings in America, but he did not invent most of them. Rather, he chose already existing options on such grounds as simplicity, analogy, or etymology. Other differences are due to the Francophile tastes of the 19th century Victorian era Britain. AIM almost always uses I's in words like realize. Brie prefers ISE, but also uses I's on occasion. There are a few differences in punctuation rules. British English is more tolerant of run on sentences, called comma splices in American English, and American English requires that periods and commas be placed inside closing quotation marks even in cases in which British rules would place them outside. American English also favors the double quotation mark over single. AIM sometimes favors words that are morphologically more complex whereas Brie uses clipped forms, such as AIM transportation and Brie transport or where the British form is a back formation, such as AIM burglarize and Brie burgle. However, while individuals usually use one or the other, both forms will be widely understood and mostly used alongside each other within the two systems. British English also differs from American English in that schedule can be pronounced with either or. Click on a colored area to see an article about English in that country or region. Caught caught merger to, the triggering event for the Pittsburgh chain shift in the city itself slash 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 but no trace of the Canadian shift slash o slash is, full 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 merger to, specifically in Greater Pittsburgh, slash A slash is, particularly before slash L slash N slash R slash, and in unstressed function words. No cot cot merger, the cot vowel is and cot vowel is slash A slash is at least before slash B slash, slash D slash, slash G slash, slash V slash, or slash Z slash, or word finally, and potentially elsewhere, the triggering event for the southern shift slash a slash slash e slash slash i slash, southern drawl may break short front vowels into gliding vowels, slash a e slash, slash slash, slash 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 a slash is, the triggering event for the backup glide shift in more advanced subtypes slash a slash 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 o slash is. No cot cot merger, the cot vowel is and cot vowel is, this severe distinction is the triggering event for the back vowel shift before slash r slash, unique mid-Atlantic slash a e slash split system. The bad vowel is and sad vowel is slash o slash is slash a slash is. No merry 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 merger. No cot cot merger, 
the caught vowel is and caught vowel is, this severe distinction is the triggering event for the back vowel shift before slash r slash, non rota city or variable rota city, unique New York City slash AE slash split system, the bad vowel is and bad vowel is slash o slash is, no merry 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 merger. Caught caught merger to, non rota city or variable rota city slash a slash is slash o slash is, slash u slash is, commonly, beginnings of slash a slash and slash a slash in a raised position when before voiceless consonants, and, respectively, possibly no merry 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 merger, no father bother merger, the father vowel is and bother vowel is. The merger of slash slash and slash slash, making father and bother rhyme. This change, known as the father bother merger is in a transitional or completed stage nearly universally in North American English. Exceptions are in Northeastern New England English, such as the Boston accent, New York City English, Philadelphia English, Baltimore English, and many Southern dialects such as the Yat dialect, about half of all Americans merge of the vowels slash slash and slash slash. This is the so-called caught caught merger, where words like caught and caught are homophones. This change has occurred most firmly in eastern New England, greater Pittsburgh and the whole western half of the country, for speakers who do not merge caught and caught, the lot cloth split has taken hold. This change took place prior to the unrounding of the cot. It is the result of the lengthening and raising of the cot vowel, merging with the cot vowel in many cases before voiceless fricatives, which is also found in some varieties of British English, as well as before slash slash, usually in gone, often in on, and irregularly before slash slash dot, the strut vowel rather than the lot or thought vowel, is used in the function words was, of, from, what, everybody, nobody, somebody, anybody, and, for some speakers, because and want, when stressed, vowel mergers before. Intervocalic slash slash, the merry merry merry, serious serious, and hurry furry mergers are found in most American English dialects. However, exceptions exist primarily along the East Coast, Americans vary slightly in their pronunciations of our colored vowels such as those in slash slash and slash slash sometimes monophthongizing towards and or tensing towards and respectively, causing pronunciations like for pair slash pair and for peer slash peer. Also, slash jr slash is often reduced to, so that cure, pure, and mature may all end with the sound, thus rhyming with blur and sir. The word sure is also part of this rhyming set as it is commonly pronounced. Horse horse merger, making the vowels slash slash and slash o slash before our homophones, with homophonous pairs like horse slash horse, Core slash core, for slash four, morning slash morning, war slash war, etc. Homophones, wine wine merger, making pairs like wine slash wine, wet slash wet, whales slash whales, where slash where, etc. Homophones, in most cases eliminating slash slash, the voiceless labiovelar fricative. Many older varieties of Southern and Western American English still keep these distinct, but the merger appears to be spreading.